Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone on behalf of Nehru Planetarium, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. I welcome you all. So uh, as you know that National Science Day is approaching and uh, Planetarium has planned two very interesting activities for you all. So today we are having this uh, scale down virtual solar walk and also if the time permit us, we will try to make some new celestial friends in our universe. So today's virtual solar walk is in the close collaboration with National Science Center Delhi. National Science Center Delhi is a part of largest network of science centers, museum in the world known as National Council of Science Museum, popularly known as NCSM, an autonomous society under the Ministry of Cultures. Government of India was formed on April 4, 1978. NCSM was developed its own national-wide networks of 26 science museum center. In addition, NCSM has developed science center museum of different states and union territories of India. NCSM has also developed several centers and galleries of different government organizations such as ONGC, BL, ICAR and also collaborated internationally for development of museum science center for uh, galleries such as Rajiv Gandhi Center, Mauritius, India, Gallery of Buddhism at International Buddhist Museum, Sri Lanka, and etc. Today from National Science Center, we have with us Sri Rakesh Kumar Tripathi working as educational officer with us to tell you more about this uh, virtual journey. And we will try to make some new celestial friend from your neighborhood. So Planetarium, welcome you, sir, uh, about sure. Rakesh, sir. I would like to tell that uh, he's having a strong educational background together with a recent experience as an educationist in the Science Museum. Plan, organize, implement, and review related programs, including facilitated various workshops, session camps, event, as well as school nationwide science initiative he also involved in organizing science program and performances as well as relevant interactive resources which leverage the rich and rich the exhibit he all led a team of educator in delivering age appropriate informal and hands-on science activities and program for school and family visitors we are really thankful for national science center officials and rakesh sir to collaborate for such a great program altogether. So now over to you because I think many of the students have already started writing in the chat box. So let's take a virtual solar walk. And yes, you can post your relevant question during the chat because towards the end, we will highlighting all those chats and then sir can answer whatever you have asked. So now uh, without wasting a time, let's go to Rajesh. Uh, and uh, thank you, Parinaman, for uh, this introduction. So we from National Science Center, as I told you, we are going to make a virtual solar system model. In real world, it's called solar walk. And what is this solar walk? It's an activity to make a scale down model of a solar system on Earth. I think all of us are very much familiar with this fact. In our secondary school or our senior secondary school, we always, our teacher always told us to make a model of a solar system. Then what we do at that time, we just make a small thermocall or a cardboard model. This is, uh, I think, a two feet, three feet or now four feet size. And after we place the balls of different sizes together on a elliptical orbit to make a model of a solar system. So first of all, I just, want to elaborate the concept of modeling. Modeling is if we want to make a model of a virus, then obviously we have to scale up the size of virus for the comfortable study. In actual, the model is nothing. It's a elaborated structure of any object to study the different parts. So if I want to make a model of a virus or a bacteria, I have to scale up. But if I want to make a model of the building, suppose the building of National Science Center or Nehru Planetarium, obviously I have to scale down the size. Now, while doing this modeling, we have to make sure that each and every parameter should be scaled down. What is it? If I want to make a model of a building, 
then I have to scale down the size of the pillars also, the doors also, and window also. As a chani lagega na kega building kamne door to bada hi rakha aur usko window ko scale down kar diya hai, squeeze kar diya. So it's not better. That's why whenever we are going to make a scale down or a scale up model, we have to scale down each and every parameter and without wasting time, we just go to the solar system. I think because it's a YouTube live. Uh, if if I ask a question to you, how big is solar system? So I think most of you have the idea it's a very big area, but as compared to the universe, it's very small. But how big is this universe and how big is this solar system? So while performing this activity, it's called the solar walk, we are going to make an idea of the sizes and distance in a solar system. Because it's a virtual solar walk, we are not moving on a ground. That's why I just give you an idea of distance uh, during the talk. And we will have an idea of the sizes by using some kitchen material or kitchen item. So if you work in the kitchen, you will get the idea very perfectly. If not, so go to the kitchen after the demonstration and search for the objects which are there in this demonstration. So, so first of all, if I make a model of a solar system, the scale down model of system, then I have to search for a number. What to do? I scale down the solar system. I want to scale down the solar system half of the size, one tenth, one hundred, one million, or one trillion. So just one magical figure is there. The figure is after five, we have eight zeros. So these eight zeros are there after five. And these eight zeros make a number. It's called five billion time. It's a very huge number. If we scale down the size of the solar system object five billion times, then we can make a comfortable model. We are not going beyond the 5 billion because after that the objects are very diminished, they are very small in size. We can't see it. And if we take the number smaller, then the size of sun is very bigger and the objects are comparatively bigger in size. So the 5 billion is a perfect number and this 5 billion is a huge number. It's a very huge number. So I just give you an idea to give the basically uh, feel of the number 5 billion. If Suppose you got a job and your employer is ready to give you the one month salary of 5 billion times. You are going to get 5 billion rupees per month. I think obviously each and everyone is ready to join this job. But the condition is that whenever the salary is given to you at the end of the month, this is on one one rupee coin. And you have to count before taking the cash back to home, whether it is correct or not. If you are getting more money, you have to return it back. And if the money is left, you can ask for more. So if you are counting coin one by one at the rate one coin per second, it will take 5 billion seconds and approximately 33 years to count 5 billion. That means this 5 billion is a very huge number. You are getting a salary on 2023 Feb month and last next 33 years, you are engaged in counting your salary. So this 5 billion is a huge number. If we scale down the sizes of different solar system object, suppose the first object, I think all of uh, us are very much familiar with the fact the sun, the biggest object of the solar system, and it's also called the father of the solar system. The real size is approximately 58 million kilometer dia. So if we scale down the size 5 billion times, then this is the size of the sun in our scale down model. 5 billion, huge number. The sun is bigger than 5 billion times from this one feet dia basketball. So we are going, we start our comparison here. This is the sun. And in real, the sun is 5 billion times bigger than this. So I just place the sun here on this tabletop. This is the massive and a huge object in the solar system. And we have an activity sheet. The second ca camera, I just show you the activity sheet and we are going to perform the activity by testing some <coughs> interesting object on the sheet. So this is our sun. Now, in the same scale, if we scale down 
the size of the first planet that is mercury or grah budh grah to agar hum mercury and budh grah ko chhota karenge if we scale down the size of mercury 5 billion times then in our kitchen we are eating a very small and a one grain is there in our kitchen that is called mustard seed or sarso ke dane main yahan pe bahut sare mustard seed i just placed plenty of mustard seed in this camera about the sheet we just have a look these are very small less than 1 mm size is there so the smallest planet is the mercury and we scale down mercury 5 billion time i'm going to place the one grain of this mustard seed on one sh activity sheet and this black color dot which is you can see on the activity sheet this is the scale down size of the planet mercury so if we compare just remember the ball is one feet diameter and this is of the 1 mm less than 1 mm this is the smallest planet if we compare the size of sun and mercury then we get realize the mercury is very 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 small as compared to the sun so this is the first planet and this is the smallest planet of the solar system the real size of this mercury is approximately 4800 km and the distance of mercury as sun is approximately 55 million kilometers so it's not very close close to sun distance is huge and size is very 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 less so as i told you whenever we are doing this scale down modeling we have to scale down each and every parameter so here we scale down the size of mercury but now we have we are going to make a model of the solar system then we have to scale down the distance also so i have told you the distance between the sun and the mercury is approximately 55 million km but if we scale down the distance in the same scale the 5 billion time then you have to travel approximately 18 meter that means the distance between the sun and the mercury is approximately 18 meter if we scale down the distance again on the same scale 5 billion time so you have to travel 18 meter from this ball to the power direction to reach to the mercury in a scale down modeling now we are moving further next the next planet we are getting that is venus i think you are familiar with the venus and we are not going to basically tell you because the time is very short uh, the characteristic feature of different planets and mainly you are aware about the fact the mercury is oh sorry venus is the hottest planet why hot because the greenhouse effect is <clears throat> very high there greenhouse gases are there the methane sulfuric acid cloud and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide the energy remain trapped inside because it is a hottest planet and in the evening time we can see venus in the evening and the morning time it's also called the morning and the evening star although it's a planet so we take the analogy of the size of venus again by using a kitchen item and this is one grain of a urdta the black color dal mama eat karti hai kai bari banati hai uske baad mein hum khate hain kuch ko pasand hai kuch ko pasand nahi hai and the grain of this one black color dal i just place there again on the activity sheet so this black color dal it represents the scale down size of venus so this is the venus this is mercury if you compare the size between the venus and the mercury so again you will find the size of venus is more than the mercury but the both planet together again they are very very small the size is very negligible as compared to the size of the sun so do planet samne karke dekh liye venus and the mercury both grah aur shukra grah dono ko humne yahan pe scale down karke size sun ke sath compare karke dekha so they are very very small i'm going to basically place the ball there in this thing here with camera if it is possible no camera frame mein bhi nahi aa pa rahe so hum kya karenge we are moving from 
sun to venus the distance between the sun and the venus is approximately 108 million kilometers 108 million kilometers the real distance and the scale down karte so 5 billion times the distance is approximately 37 meter so from 18 meter which is the distance of mercury from the sun we have to move approximately 19 meter more and 37 meter pe humko yahan par venus mil raha hai we are getting the, the planet venus so this is the size of mercury this one is venus and if we travel from the sun to 37 meter on a scale down model then we will reach to the planet venus and if we move from venus to beyond then we'll get another interesting planet that is our home planet it's called earth so again i have in this chart one dal one lentils that is called moong ki dal or a green dal hum sab ne hamesha jab bhi hum khichdi banate hain mamma made khichdi we eat the khichdi and in this khichdi we are using this green color moong dal the one grain of this moong dal because it's a green planet life is there that's why we take analogy of planet earth by using this moong dal the one grain of moong dal again i'm going to place this grain of moong dal on the activity sheet you just compare the size and you will make sure the size of mercury and the sorry size of venus and the earth is almost same they are also called the sisters planet. Sisters, yeah. Okay, we always basically find it out. The Mercury and the Venus, they are known as the sisters planet because the size is almost same. The texture is same. All these planets are the Mercury, Venus, and the Earth. These are the rocky planets. These are made of rocks. And because they are gravitationally bound with the sun, and sun is a massive object. The gravitational pull is very high. It's revolving. These planets are revolving around the sun. And here, I'm going to basically make sure one more thing. Uh, we uh, Earth have very beautiful satellites, a natural satellite, which is moon. We will discuss about the phases of moon later on. We have a model of phases of moon also. So this Earth is, if we travel from sun to approximately 150 million kilometer, in real size 150 million kilometer then you reached to the earth in a scale down model the sun is approximately 30 meter apart from the earth so in 5 billion scale down model if we travel from venus to 30 meter then we will reach to the planet earth it's a natural habitat earth it's a green planet and if you have a comparison of all these planets, Mercury, Venus, and the Earth with the size of the Sun, the basketball, then you find it out the size of all these planets together is very, very small as compared to the size of the Sun. So we are moving further. So again, we'll find another interesting planet and a rocky planet that is called Mars or Mangal Grah, which is basically red in color. Uh, I think now you get the idea. We are always using a red color dal in our kitchen that is called Masoor, Lal Masoor dal, or red lentil. So here we have one grain of Masoor dal. It is in my palm. I'm taking it out and I'm going to place this Masoor dal on the activity sheet. The one grain of this Masoor dal, it will represent the scale down size of the mass. Again, the mass is smaller than the Earth. It is made up of the red soil because of the presence of ferric oxide or the iron oxide. And it has volcanic mountain that's called the Mons Olympus, which is the biggest mountain of the solar system. So here we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the Mars. These four planets are called rocky planets and an inner planet of the solar system. So I'm repeating it again. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the Mars. These four are the rocky planets of the solar system. 
and these are the inner planets. Beyond this, we have the joinial planets or the gaseous planet. Now, again, just make an imagination, put all these four planets together. And if you compare the size with the sun, so again, the size of all these planets together is very, very small than the size of the sun. That's why we call the sun is the biggest object of the solar system. So now we are from here, we are moving to the next planet. And I think you have an idea the next planet is the biggest planet of the solar system. The biggest planet of the solar system, and that is Jupiter, the gaseous planet. It's the biggest planet. If we scale down the size, then we have to search one another object in our kitchen. And this object is a lemon. But instead of lemon, what we are using, we are using this small TV ball. If you compare the size of the biggest planet Jupiter with the sun, so comparison is there in front of you. This is a very big. And as compared to sun, this object is very small. OK, so I'm going to place this one ball, which represents the 5 billion scale down size of the Jupiter in our scale down solar system model on the activity sheet. And you can compare the size of this Jupiter with the other planets, planet Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, or Jupiter. So if we have a comparison of sizes in between these planets, so we have four rocky planets. If you compare the size of Jupiter with Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So as compared to these four inner planets, the size of Jupiter is more, it's bigger. But if you compare the size of all these five planets with the sun, the, again, the sun is a massive object, it's a bigger object. And we just go back to the distance. So if you travel approximately 778 million kilometers from the sun in a real solar system, then we reach to the planet. Mercury, but in our scale down model, we have to cover approximately 155 meter, 155 meter from the sun to reach to the Jupiter. So, what we are doing, we are making a very big scale down model of the solar system. Our scale down factor is 5 billion times, that means this is a magical figure. In the 5 billion times, the size of Mercury is this much. We scale down further, then what happened? This object, the Mercury, is not visible to us in the scale down. That's why we just choose the factor of 5 billion times. So if we scale down the size of Mercury 5 billion times, we'll get this small object, the mustard seed. And on the same scale, the biggest object and biggest planet of Jupiter is there. It is small lemon or the TP ball. And on the same scale, the Sun is a basketball. Now, the comparison is there. We just uh, compare the size of different planets with the sun. Now, the distance. If we move from the sun to approximately 155 meter. So if we are making a model of a solar system this much big or this much big, again, it's not perfectly scaled down model. From Sun to Jupiter, if we are we make them, we are going to make a model of a solar system five billion scale down, and we are scale down. We are going to scale down the sizes also. Then the distance is approximately 155 kilo, 155 meter till the Jupiter. It's a very huge distance. आपका रूम से भी बाहर चला जाएगा, बहुत बड़ा बनेगा. और अभी तो हम जुपिटर तक पहुँचे, नवस्पति ग्रह तक ही पहुँचे. Now we are moving to the next planet, that is the ring planet, Saturn. So Saturn is a very beautiful planet. And if we just peep inside the telescope to see the Saturn, we can see beautiful rings, which are made up of the dust, rocks, and ice. So different 
the rings are there around the Saturn, and we can see the rings there. The size of Jupiter and Saturn is comparatively, it's not very short, very small, but it's a little bit small than the Jupiter. And we have another ball of green color. This green color ball represents the scale down size of Saturn in our scale down model. This is the Saturn. And again, in the activity sheet, if you are going to place the Saturn, you just compare the size. And here, with this ball, or this is our Sun. If we have a comparison of the size of Saturn with the Sun, if you compare it, again, it's very small. It's not very huge one. It's very small as compared to Sun. I'm going to place it, the Saturn, without ring on the activity sheet. So here, the Saturn is there. Now we have on our activity sheet, the Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So Jupiter and Saturn, from Jupiter, these planets are the gaseous, and these are made up of different gases. And this is the biggest planet of the solar system. This is the second biggest planet of the solar system. These two planets together, if you compare the sizes of these all six planets, you have an idea. The Mercury is the smallest one. Jupiter is the biggest one. But if you compare the, all the planets together with the Sun, again, the Sun is very massive body. It's very big and a huge object in the solar system. Now, if you basically compare the distance, if you travel 1,427 million kilometers from the Sun in a real solar system, you will reach from Sun to the Saturn. But in our scale down model, again, I'm repeating our scale down factor is 5 billion times. We have to travel approximately 286 meters. If we travel from the Sun 280 meters, then we will reach to the Saturn in our scale down model. So again, 286, it's not a very small distance. If we are making a model, then it's a huge model we are going to be made. But what is happening here? We have two more planets. And these two planets are the Uranus and the Neptune. So from this, if you travel to the Uranus, again, the Uranus is a not very big planet. But we take the analogy of Uranus, a blue color planet. And in your kitchen, you will find out small grapes. Or otherwise, in your playing area, the marbles are there. So this small one marble, it will represent the 5 billion scale down size of the planet Uranus. So if we compare the size of Uranus with the sun, again, it's small. It's very small. So this is the real comparison which we are doing because the, the all both the objects are 5 billion times scaled down. So when we compare, the scale down factor should be same. So this is the real comparison. The sun is this much of the size, and this is the planet Uranus. I'm going to place the Uranus again on our activity sheet. The second last planet of the solar system. Okay, so this is the activity sheet, and I'm going to place this Uranus, the blue color marble here. And here we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the Uranus. If you compare the sizes, we just make it out. The smallest fan is Mercury, and the biggest is the Jupiter. And Uranus, obviously, it's smaller than the Jupiter and the Saturn. And if we have an idea of the distances, then in a real solar system, one have to travel 2,871 million kilometers from the sun 
tourists to the Uranus. In our scale down model, one have to travel approximately 550 meters. That is half kilometer from the sun to this to the Uranus. So this five million scale down model, which is a very huge number, it is approximately half kilometer wide now from sun to the Uranus. Next planet we are we have that is called Neptune. So again, Neptune. If you take the analogy, the small grape and the size of this marble. It's a different colored marble. So this is the Neptune, planet Neptune. And if you have a comparison of the sun and the planet Neptune, then again, you will find it out. The size of this planet is very, very small. I'm going to place it again on the activity sheet. And then we have a very interesting comparison and we can basically make sure after performing this activity, the sun is massive object and a biggest object of the solar system. So here in this activity sheet, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All eight planets are there. These all eight planets together, if you please, these eight planets together in front of sun, again, the size of these all planets are very negligible, very small as compared to sun. That's why we call 99.9% .9 mass of the solar system is inside the sun. Amisham sunte, amisham parte, but performing this activity, we just make it out. The sun is a huge and a massive object and 99.9% .9 mass of the solar system is inside the sun. Now I'm taking this activity sheet from here and I'm placing it just in front of our sun. Yes. So you'll make it out. The Mercury is very small. Although Jupiter and the Saturn is visible to us in comparison of sun, and you can make out Uranus and Neptune also. So this is about the sizes. Now, the distance from the sun to the Neptune in a real solar system, one has to travel approximately 4,500 million kilometers. The huge distance, 4,500 million kilometers one has to travel from the sun to reach to the Neptune. But in our scale down model, one have to travel approximately 850 meter, sorry, 800 meter, 850 meter from sun to the Neptune. So it's a huge distance. Despite of the fact we scale down the solar system 5 billion times, our, uh, our solar system is approximately 1 kilometer long. It's a big object. If this is a, this much area, the 680, 650 kilometer wide, after 5 billion times scale down, then in real, the solar system is a very vast area. It's a huge area. After that, we have the Kepler band, the dwarf planets are there, and the sudden gas coming from the Earth's clouds, that's called comet. We have an activity of comet also. So this solar system is a huge, huge, huge area. In this universe, trillion of trillion galaxies are there. And these trillion of trillion galaxies have trillion of trillion star system. One of them is our solar system. That's why we call this universe is a very wide and a very huge, very vast area. We can't imagine. So by performing the activity, we have an idea. The solar system is a huge area, and the sizes of planets are very comparatively, they are very small as compared to the sun. That's why um, every time we find out in the textbook and even the general knowledge books, the 99% mass of the solar system is inside the sun and the rest of objects are very less. So after the solar system object, we are moving from Earth satellite. It's called Luna or the moon. So here we have a model. That is a model of 
moon. I mean, I'm, I'm going to revolve this model and you will find out different phases of moon because of the orientation of moon, the illumination of moon throughout the month get before. Sometimes it is bigger, bigger means the full moon, then it's going to be diminish or you just cut it out. Then this is the quarter moon. Now you can see the crescent moon is visible to us. The new moon or Amavas. So lunar month is of 29 days and every time we have different phases of moon when we are watching the moon on the earth here you will find out again the moon start reappearing crescent quarter moon is there this is called the gibbous phase of moon and the full moon so this is a model of phases of moon i just demonstrate in front of you and i just have a word with you can we have beyond the Neptune, the area is called Cupier belt, and the dwarf planet, the Pluto is there, and the more dwarf planets are there. And beyond this, we have an area it's called Oost clouds. From the Oost clouds, we are getting the long periodic comets. I think you all are very much familiar with the comet in Hindi, it's called Dhrum, uh, Dhrum Ketu or Kuchaltara. When it's approached towards the sun, it's a rocky body, it has frozen gases, it has some uh, rocky substance and when it's approached towards the sun it gets disintegrated and it has million kilometer long tail two type of tails are there one is the iron tail and there is the dust tail and when it's approaching towards the sun and we are we are seeing from the earth we can see the bright fireball it's moving in a space making a long tails so we are going to make a replica of comet by using certain or uh, things which are readily available in our kitchen and we are using one and two chemicals also for that i just move on to make a replica of comic we require we require ground soil we require ground soil the playground soil to make the hamari then we are using the water because the water content is there. We are using the soya sauce. Although we are going to make the chow mein here, but we are using the soya sauce. I will explain you why. And we are using one chemical also. It's called ammonia solution. To cook a comet, we require a pressure cooker or utensil. So we are using this poly bag. Utensil. So I'm going to make one comet in front of you and I'm not making it, I'm cooking a comet in a kitchen. So here, this is a utensil. I require the help of my volunteer, Mr. Manish is here with me. Please hold it. So I'm going to make a small replica of comet. So I'm pouring this soil, the ground soil inside this poly bag. Okay. The comet is a chunk of rock. It has some water content also. Obviously, it's a frozen water. I'm mixing water in this soil. And by mixing the soil and water, I'm making the mixture a little bit muddy. I'm mixing it and I'm making it a little bit muddy. Okay. I'm mixing it properly. Uniformly, I have to mix it. I think I should add more soil. So what I'm trying to do here, 
I'm going to make a real time replica of Comet by using this playground soil, water, and this Comet has some organic matters also, ammonia, amino acids, protein. So these organic matters are there. So for this, I'm adding a little bit amount of soya sauce in it. It will also give a brownish color to this comet. And the comet always smells pungently. A very peculiar pungent smell is coming from the comet. For it, we are using this ammonia solution. It is a chemical with pungent smell. Now I'm mixing it properly. Now, we have to freeze out all these ingredients. For that, we require dry ice. That is frozen carbon dioxide gas because the temperature is low, approximately minus 20 degrees centigrade. That's why I'm using the gloves. Also, we request everyone kindly do uh, this experiment in uh, somebody with the elder with you because I can see many of the young kids are also available in the uh, session today. So do not try anything with your own. Keep an elder person or a teacher with you while performing the activity. Yeah, that is that is good. Because this dry ice is a very low temperature and you may get a frostbite by using yeah. this one. I'm going to put this dry ice, dry ice in water. You just see. These white fumes which are coming out, these are condensed water vapors. And here you can see the carbon dioxide gas get dissolved inside the water. Otherwise, in other words, we can see the solar water preparation is going on here. So it's the temperature is very low. So you should have a supervision of some elderly people or some expert while performing these kind of activity. So I am introducing, I am putting this dry ice inside this bag so that this mixture, it will become harder. I am mixing it. And at the time of mixing, we make sure the mouth of this poly bag, it remains open. Otherwise, because of the pressure, the pressure of the gas, this poly bag gets burst out. So I am pressing it down hard to give you an irregular shape. This chunk will freeze out in a short while. Now the plate is ready with my friend and we are ready to serve you the comet from our kitchen. Okay. I'm taking it out. Now this comet is ready, this replica of comet is ready and it has, oh my god, this comet has rocky irregular shape, the frozen gases are there, a little bit amount of water content is there and this is the chunk. I just place it on this plate and if you blow on it, I'm not sure on the camera, these fumes are visible to you or not, but you can see here, if you have another camera, camera the activity camera, here you can see this is a chunk of irregular shape, the different Gases are coming out, the jets are coming out from this comet. And if you smell it, it's a it's it pungently smell. The smell is very bad. So this is a small comet in front of you. 
and these kind of sudden gas they are always coming from the distance area not the QPL band and the Oort's clouds to our solar system we have sudden gas every time uh, from the earth we can see it it move around the sun in a highly elliptical orbit and again go back so some known periodic comets are there hills comet mcmurtry comet comet catena so these comets are visible from the earth in the previous years so with this i think i conclude this demonstration here i think you have a fair idea sizes of distances in a solar system object by performing this activity and you can have an idea of different composition of comet by performing the comet making activity thank you thank you thank you so much sir for explaining in such a brilliant way i think everyone uh, now got the clear idea like how the sizes and everything is very important when we talk about some scientific things so it will give the broader picture in everybody's mind like when we scale down things we really don't have to scale down their uh, uh, quantity but also like how they are different from each other so and also in an added bonus we got to know about the phases of moon and also how the comet compositions are made so i again request everyone do try this activity but in a supervision of some adult and if uh, teachers are available in this uh, chat uh, in this session today i urge them to kindly do such hands on activity in school so that they'll get the better idea how they themselves can create the comet and can get the better understanding about them about them so now we'll uh, we'll be opening the session for question and answer you have anything in your mind we we'll, we will be taking those questions jo chat mein aapne post kiye hain and also when we talking about the solar system uh ye baat sabko bata dein ki jaise sir ne venus ke bare mein bataya abhi venus jo hai wo hame दिखाई दे रहा है अभी आप सर से पूछ सकते हैं बहुत ही सुंदर अभी एक सेलेस्ट्रियल ट्रीट कुछ समय पहले सब बहुत मीडिया में सर्कुलेटेड थी कि किस तरह से अलाइन थे मून के पास और उसको आप देख सकते थे वो भी डेफिनेटली हम सर से बताएंगे और इवन इन द कमिंग नेक्स्ट मंथ फुल मून के पास नेहरू प्लानिटेरियम और नेशनल साइंस सेंटर और स्पेस इंडिया तीन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के साथ वहाँ पर एक एस्ट्रोनाइट टूरिज्म प्लान कर रहे हैं जो फ्री फॉर ऑल है पुराना किला में आप लोग वहां पर आ सकते हैं और टेलीस्कोप से देख सकते हैं जस्ट हेड ऑन कि अभी आप देखेंगे ना इवनिंग टाइम वेस्ट जहां पे सनसेट हो रहा है उस डायरेक्शन में आपको ब्राइट ऑब्जेक्ट दिखेंगे जस्ट लाइक अ स्टार जो सबसे ब्राइट है दैट इज वीनस और शुक्र ग्रह बस टेलीस्कोप है तो आप उसको टेलीस्कोप से देख सकते हैं और उसके ऊपर आपको जुपिटर भी दिख रहा होगा जो बृहस्पति ग्रह हमारा है बहुत अच्छे से दिख रहा है एज मैम टोल यू थ्री डेज बैक द मून जुपिटर एंड द वीनस दे आर अलाइन इन स्ट्रेट लाइन तो उस टाइम में कई लोगों ने फोटोग्राफी भी करी थी बहुत अच्छा भी लग रहा था इट्स लुक लाइक फ्रॉम अर्थ अ सेलेस्टल पार्क इज मूविंग अप इन द स्काई तो आप इन ऑब्जेक्ट्स को टेलीस्कोप से देखना चाहते हैं इफ यू हैव नॉट एनी इंटरेस्ट इन एस्ट्रॉमी तो डेफिनेटली National Science Center Delhi, Nehru Planetarium, and Space India. They are um, doing one program. It's called Astronaut Tourism Program. Fifth and the sixth March from the Old Fort. Purana Kila, the UCB. We will show you the telescope. It's free of cost. You are invited. You can come with your queries. You can satisfy your telescope. You can see different celestial objects. 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 Bhavya Chauhan, sir, how the solar system originate? The origin of solar system took place uh, uh, after the basically the nebula. Uh, basically, you can see the one star get bursted, and after that, the different object, the matter is scattered here and there. It move combine, and then the formation of sun took place, and the debris, many debris. is scattered there here and there in this particular area so at that time the most of the object that is engulfed by the star sun because the star formation took place first prototype proto star then the main sequence star no sun is the main sequence star with half life span so this is this object basically it's moving around because of the gravitational bound uh, they are gravitational bound with the sun it's moving around the sun and make one orbit so It's a, it's a 
tedious and a long process in a million of million years this took place the formation of this stable formation of solar system took place it's a huge process so different objects are there they combine together to form and the different theories are there i think you are familiar with the theory ki jo hamara chandrama hai ya jo prithvi hai in pehle kabhi ek the soot ke alag ho gaye ya saath mein to karodo saal pehle formation of star hua koi dark star tha us star se hamara solar system pura form So we'll take the next question. Uh, does the solar system have an end? Does the solar system have an edge? End, end. Khatam ho sakta. We are not. We are not very sure. We are not very sure. And I just repeated here when we are talking about the universe. जो भी हम activity कर रहे हैं इस activity का एक objective ये भी है कि when we are discussing about the universe, we are not familiar with the universe. We can see only four percent of the universe. Rest of the things are dark matter and dark energy. We are not aware about the fact what is this. So only four percent का भी हम बहुत कम ही देख पा रहे हैं. Solar system भी हम लोगों ने human being ने भी अच्छे से explore नहीं किया है. We have an idea the Oort clouds is there, Kuiper belt is there. What is going on there? We are not very sure. Indirect astronomy we are performing by the spectroscopy, by sending the probes there at the end of the solar system, but not we are very very much we are not very much sure. Okay, what is the end of the solar system? But for the time being, after the Oort clouds, I mean, as I mean, that after the Oort cloud, nothing is there, and Oort cloud is the last edge of the solar system on the end of the solar system. So, uh, I think this is a hypothetical question, but good that you are uh, using your mind to uh, think in a creative manner. So, we will uh, take this. Uh, what happen if Earth and Sun has same size? ओके ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता क्योंकि दो सेम साइज ऑब्जेक्ट ग्रेविटेशनल बाउंड रहेंगे नहीं सो फिर भी अगर ऐसा हो जाता है कि दोनों का सेम साइज है डेफिनेटली दोनों की ग्रेविटेशनल फुल अलग अलग होना चाहिए वो अभी तक जैसा हम जितना साइंस जानते हैं जितना समझ पा रहे हैं उसके बेस पे वो नहीं हो सकता तो सन और आर्थ का सेम साइज होना पॉसिबल नहीं है साइंस डिफरेंस होगा तभी दोनों ग्रेविटेशनली बाउंड रहेंगे तभी सन एक बड़ी ऑब्जेक्ट के सामने चाहे सन है या आर्थ है जो भी बड़ी ऑब्जेक्ट होगी उसके सामने दूसरे ऑब्जेक्ट ऑर्बिट करेंगे तो अभी तक जितनी साइंस हम जानते हैं नियर फ्यूचर में कोई साइंस आएगी या क्या होगा आई एम नॉट वेरी श्योर बट अभी जितने हम साइंस आते हैं दोनों सेम साइज के होंगे तो एक सिस्टम में नहीं Uh, so you can explain again again a uh, very big question very very it seems it seems ki abhi humko aisa koi intelligence life nahi mil rahi hai but again hum akele to nahi hai ji <laughs> because when we talk about life actually they ek sabke dimag mein jab bhi hum universe ki baat karte hain na and khas kar school ke bachcho ki jo thode se niche class ke hain like 8th below 8th class this is the one most uh, Uh, questions arousing in their mind in their curiosity about the black hole and also the alien world so bahut se questions chat box mein isse related hai ki kya other uh, life exists karti hai do alien exist is tarah ke bahut sare chat box mein question hai so i think main in sab ko summarize kar deti hu taki sir is pe apna ek opinion de de i think this will be all right uh, with everyone because okay. sabke questions same questions aa rahe hain to usko lena thoda mushkil ho jayega So, sir, आप इसी इसी को को भी हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि ऐसा मिले जहाँ पर कुछ लाइफ हमें पॉसिबिलिटी मिले सेटी प्रोजेक्ट चलता था पहले रेडियो टेलीस्कोप भी सिग्नल ढूंढने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं बट If we believe, because science hypothesis they start with here, that is fine. G G. We believe that something is there. We are searching it, but as per the present scenario, we are getting nothing. Scientifically, we are not getting nothing. Abi different. You can go Google pe news mein or different news portals hain. Jaha pe aayega aapko ki alien dikhe the ya. Abi piche news mein chala US mein do aliens ke <coughs> spacecraft the ya jo bhi the. 
UFO, UFO was found. UFO and, yeah. So these are the news, but they are not scientifically true. So we have to be basically, we have to wait for some time. Sometimes means it's a astronomy term. Sometimes it's after 50 years, 100 years, bhi ho sakta hai. Aur usse bhi ho sakta hai. but abhi tak aliens humko nahi mile hai. Aliens jo hai, hamare fictitious creatures hai. Like we, we may find life in a lower form in some other planets, but not the intelligent species like us. Abhi tak nahi hai. We are exploring the solar system, we are exploring the extraterrestrial planets also. But kya hoga? Abhi hum kuch nahi kwa sakte, ke hai ya nahi hai. Even man hi bolsa. So comment on this question. I think it's very difficult uh, right now because there is no proven theory. Nahi hai. So uh, I think we'll wait for a little more. I think it's the answer will be in our agencies. In India, mein we have ISRO. In America, mein we have NASA. So anything anything or come from these organizations, I yeah. think then only we can say something. Sanvi, uh, sir, can Earth escape gravitational pull of the sun? Yeah. And it's going to be escape at the time when sun is going to die. Okay, just say sun ka gravitation pull come hoga. Okay, at the time when sun is going to die. Abhi aisa nahi hai, dekhe. Bohat hi aapko aram se sochna hoga. That sun is a massive object. Thik hai? 150 million kilometer diameter and it is it has hydrogen and a gas which is basically converting in a helium thermonuclear fusion reaction is going on there the energy is liberated from here it's a stable system in astronomy if a system is stable it takes billion billion years to basically move on agar ye dodo usko jana hai to usko billion se bhi lene lagenge to abhi aisa nahi hai ki aap bologe ki kuch aisa ho jaye ki aur escape kar jaye sun ki gravity mein abhi possibility nahi hai but जब sun के अंदर changes आएंगे, earth के अंदर ऐसा कोई बड़े changes नहीं आने वाले, जब sun के अंदर changes आएंगे, इसका diameter expand होना शुरू होगा, तो as per the theories, till Mars, the object get engulfed inside the sun, and after that the rest of object it drift in the space. वो कैसे जाएंगे, कहाँ होगा collision होगा, we are not very sure, but ऐसा होगा at the time when sun is going to die. उसमें भी time लगेगा, because sun का half life span ही हुआ है. Billions of billion kilometers, or billions of billion uh, years, usna bhi bache hain, five thousand million years. So we'll take the next question. And uh, students, I request everyone kindly do not post again and again question. Then uh, what happened? The chat is live, so your question automatically uh, lost in the uh, crowd. So keep keep your question. I I I'm taking each and everyone's question. So do not repost again and again. Sir, I wanted to ask that if the if the planets before the Earth were not present, what would happen to our planet's orbit and what would be the changes we face on our planet? Planets. Before the Earth were not present, what would happen to our planet's orbit? Again, the answer is the same. Because the system is stable, or if we don't have the inner planet like Venus and the Mercury, it hardly have any effect. It's have a little bit effect, but the orbit of what I, the rest of my knowledge is remain the same because Earth is gravitationally strongly bound with the Sun. So there's no effect of Venus and the Mercury on this Earth and the Sun relationship of the gravitation. Phenomenal. So any uh, any idea when will the sun die? It's take uh, approximately 50 billion years. So Sumit, I think you got uh, the idea. And uh, also, uh, Anonymous Gamer, what if all the planets were of the same size? As sir explained this possible. question. Yeah, it's not it's possible. Not possible. It's a, the system... Uh, always the stable system. I already told you the system is stable, and the one stable system form when there are different things are there. The sizes are different, the pull is different, composition is almost of the same size. Then the stable system came up. So it's not possible if all the uh, plants of the same size they are not making a uh, same system. 
uh, I think I uh, will wrap today's session because we already have a session. And one question I'm getting in the chat box, I think this uh, is something the distinguish between the God and the universe. This question is for you. Uh, it's your interpretation. I would rather say to get the clarification from others. This is something how you see it, how you believe it, how you perceive it. So we'll not comment and on this. So now I just oh. add on it. The God is a basically it's our belief and the faith only. Yes. Okay. It's not related to astronomy and the science. Yes. So it's, it's so. your faith. So it's your that that's what it's your faith, it's your perceivings, how you see it, how you believe it. So uh, we will not comment on it. Uh, you are very young, I think you you are school student. Give some time, get some more clarification on this, and you'll get the answer about this. What if all the planets were of same size? It's not possible, sir. Explain this uh, in two three times. Sir, why is the Pluto a dwarf planet? Because before it was our solar system. I think uh, the, the question is from very young <laughs> participants. Yeah. Uh, Pluto is there. Uh, this is a basically a general misconception. Uh, uh, I think we take this last question. Okay. So, yeah, we will be taking this last question. Yeah. So why, why this uh, Pluto is a dwarf planet? What is there? Earlier, the Pluto is considered as a planet. We have nine planets, we had nine planets in our solar system. But because of the uh, new technologies and discovery of the better telescope, we have more objects which are bigger than the Pluto and they are certain uh, size and they are potentially uh, compatible candidate for new planet. At the time, because the governing body, the International Astronomical Union, it just changed the classification criteria of the planet, you can have an idea. Now the three criteria are there. One, to be a to, uh, be a planet, one object has to revolve a star. Pluto is revolving the sun. Okay, this fulfilled. Second, it has to be round in a shape. Pluto is there, round in a shape. And the third is doesn't intersect or doesn't cut the orbit of the other planet. But unfortunately, the Pluto is cutting the uh, orbit of Neptune. That's why we have a different category of some other objects which are potentially capable to be the planet, but we cannot consider them the planet. There is a category it's called dwarf planet, and Pluto is there in the category of the dwarf planet because of the change of the classification. I guess this is the basically the answer of your query. Query. So I think uh, we are running with the time and. Uh... Uh, it's time to wrap today's session. I thank you, National uh, Science Center authorities, for agreeing to come together and to speak on this. And a special thank you to Rajesh, Rakesh, sir, uh, for coming here and explaining all the uh, scale model and also the activity, hands-on activities, uh, activities which they have planned to make kids understand. I think in a best way, uh, uh, we could get the clarity about the solar system and also the nearest celestial uh, neighbors like moon and the comet uh, thank you thank you for this uh, opportunity thank you thank you have a nice day Bye. thank you thank you so much sir so i think uh thank you for all the participants uh for giving your time i know your examinations are going on and you have gave us your uh time you are here from start to end so i really thank you your uh, teachers who have shared the link with you and also your parents to allow you to see this informative session. I think in some way we have uh, give you a little insight to think more about the universe and the solar system. I would also like to share that tomorrow on the National Science Day, we have a very interesting session planned with uh, Dr. Tripti, which is about Bharat ki Vidushi Betia, uh, uh, which the session is entirely dedicated to the women scientists, how they have fought with all the societal bar barriers and what they have achieved in their respective field. So I think this will be a really interesting session for all the young minds. And I really request you, urge you to join it tomorrow, 28th of the February from 3 p.m. Uh, same on the Nehru Planetarium YouTube channel. Thank you. Do take care of yourself and all the best for your examinations. Thank you.